What's up guys, Jordan Needham, JHAM3D. Today is a quality of life tutorial for everybody struggling to use the Quixel Bridge add-on for Blender. It's a great add-on, it has a lot of neat features, but it's also pretty buggy. Today we're going over how to get around those bugs and make this add-on work really nicely, assuming you already have it imported. So let's go ahead and get into this. Okay, so the first and probably most annoying bug that you run into with Quixel Bridge, you'll run into this air where you go to import something uh, let's I don't know let's import this rock uh, hopefully it'll let me I'm gonna go to download I'm gonna export this so assuming you already have Quixel installed correctly in blender sometimes you might run into this error which basically says could not send data over port to 8888 you go to edit settings and then you'll see this, which is your API port. Essentially what you want to do is make sure that this matches whatever error number that it's coming up with. You basically want to type in exactly that number. Keep in mind that this bug can be reoccurring. I don't know why, but sometimes it just reverts back to whatever it was doing and you have to manually type in that port number again. Luckily, pretty easy to fix. It is annoying though. Now, if for whatever reason you can't get that to work like it still won't import a way to get around this is to just go ahead and download the asset right here so you want to go to these three dots right here and you want to go to files and then it will locate all the files for you which you have downloaded and so you'll be able to find you know exactly what you downloaded and you'll also find whatever other things you've downloaded so this is kind of nice sometimes it's nice to have access to these things like all these different file types and stuff because if it doesn't import correctly at least you can go and manually drag these in there and set things up. Let's go ahead and move on to the next issue which I ran into with Quixel quite a few times. Now, I don't know if this has been patched or fixed up since the latest Quixel update, maybe the latest Blender update, but I'm skeptical, so I'm gonna talk about it anyway. So as you can see, I have imported this rock into Blender. When we go to render view, see it actually messed with me just now. I went to render view and I'm like, where is my rock, right? We see the outline here. It's kind of just like a transparent holdout. What happened to my rock? Basically what's happening when you're importing these assets from Quixel, it's not hooking up the image textures correctly into the principled BSDF. So basically you're ending up with a bunch of just wacky, completely out of, just out of sync. It's not working because it's just plugged into the wrong thing. Luckily, this does seem to be a pattern. Like it's usually wrong the exact same way every time. So at least it's something that you can predict and you know, go through the motions of fixing once you know how to fix it. We'll see like this one, this is the roughness texture. And for some reason it's plugged into the subsurface weight. Boom, let's plug it back into the roughness. Now you can see, well, it still doesn't look right. That's because on Blender 4.0, Quixel has always imported textures kind of incorrectly, but for some reason, once they updated the BSDF for Blender 4.0, it got even worse. And I've noticed that the reason things are transparent is actually because of this alpha channel right here. For some reason, they automatically turn it all the way down when they import these. I don't know why, but by default, it should be at one anyways. So it's kind of weird that they do that. Then another one, like you'll see your normal map is almost always plugged into the wrong thing so we want to connect that up to the actual normal and now you can see that our object is looking pretty much like it should now if you have any other textures like opacity or displacement they're going to be kind of out of whack too usually so you can uh just go through the same sort of process to fix that as well because of the nature of the way that these assets are labeled when they're brought in from blender if you import a ton of them it can get kind of confusing if you're not renaming things correctly so if you're working on a large scene in blender with quixel make sure you stay organized so that you can keep track of where these things are importing and so that you can track it down and change the alpha channel so on that note another issue that i've ran into and this kind of goes full circle is that my displacement textures won't import and i don't know why that is sometimes but it just is what it is uh so the way that we can actually go back and get that displacement texture usually it's already been downloaded and so what you can do is go back to the asset that you downloaded in quixel and click on those dots that i showed you earlier and go to files and you'll see that we actually have two different kinds of displacement we have a 
JPEG file and we also have an EXR file. Now the EXR file is going to be a little more accurate and it's also going to have a lot more data in it so it'll actually be a larger file type. Just keep that in mind. You can change these preferences in your download settings I believe so that you only get yeah, so that you can only download one of these types of files. Now, I like to have the EXR for displacement just because it is nice to have some extra detail if you need it and storage isn't a huge issue for me. So now that we've navigated to that folder, we can actually drag in our EXR and we can hook up our displacement. Boom, plug it into the height, plug this into the displacement and make sure that this is non-color because this is a non-color map. You can go into your materials over here, go into settings and change this from bump only to displacement and bump. And now we should be seeing displacement. Yeah, we have displacement going, which is, which is nice. So real quick, I wanted to walk you through how I import a material and then I kind of fix it up and a couple of quick tips to make sure that the material doesn't look too bad. And you'll get what I mean in a second. So first off, I'm gonna import something like a asphalt material. So I've already done that. I exported it and imported it into Blender. And then I'm also going to get something which is more of like a tiled, um, let's go with brick. I don't actually know how this is gonna work, but we'll see. Okay, so I have imported the materials and now I'm going to apply it to my spear that I have here. And I'm gonna go into the uh, shading tab. Again, it's transparent. That's because of the alpha channel. So let's turn that all the way up. Now we can see our asphalt material. I'm also going to add a plane, shift A, scale it up, and I'm going to apply that same material to it. So let's double check everything, make sure that all of our textures imported and make sure they imported correctly. Uh, right off the bat, I can see that the roughness is plugged into the subsurface. Again, this is a reoccurring issue like it always plugs in there i don't know why but it seems like what happened in 4.0 is the uh, order or the number of these sockets changed and it's still kind of plugging it into the wrong ones um, if you've updated maybe this has gone away i'm not sure but uh, if you're like me you're still dealing with this issue and we can see that our normal map is for some reason plugged in to our ior which is not what we want we want it plugged into Oh my gosh, guys, can't believe you let me do that. I meant to plug the roughness into the roughness. That was so dumb. Okay, and then we wanna plug the uh, normal into the normal. And it looks like we're gonna need our displacement as well. Let's go locate that. Uh, let's go to, and this is the one I downloaded. I'm gonna click on these three dots, go to files, and we can see our EXR right here. I'm gonna drag and drop that in, and we're gonna connect this up. Let's go to material settings, changes from bump only to displacement and bump. Pretty much it looks like we have everything working just fine. Now I have had before the roughness map just not appear. So if you import a material and for some reason the roughness texture isn't there or there's no roughness texture, make sure you double check to locate that because roughness is a big deal. More than likely it should be there. The thing is, if we are to scale this, we're going to have a problem, which is that it's going to be pretty obvious that our texture is repeating. So if we scale this down a bunch, we can see the seams on this texture. And that's because Quixel doesn't really have seamless textures. I don't know if they claim to or not. And there's a lot of companies that claim to have seamless textures or seamless materials, and uh, they're not. They're not seamless textures. In this case, we can work with this material here and we can make it look closer to seamless pretty quickly. Now, if you wanna go full seamless, it's a whole nother process, but just to do it quickly, it's not so bad. So a way that we can make this closer to seamless or at least appear sort of seamless, we can shift A, add in a noise texture, shift A, add in a mixed color node, and let's plug the color of this noise texture into the bottom B socket of our mix node. Change this from mix to overlay. And now we can control this factor here, kind of break up our ordinary material. Now, 
You might not actually want to use the color. Some people do that. I like to just use the factor sometimes to just break it up randomly with dark and light spots and that works good for me. Particularly on materials that are not super colorful, it works well to just use the factor whereas the color sometimes comes in handy when you're working with something with a little more color and saturation, break it up on more of a spectrum. But because this is asphalt, it actually works nice to just have dark and lighter spots, right? Let's control shift click on this noise texture so that we can see what it looks like. I'm also going to shift and then right mouse click and drag over these two nodes or these two spaghetti lines. I'm gonna move this over and I'm gonna shift A add in a color ramp. With this color ramp, we can now adjust the contrast of our noise texture here. It's already looking a lot less tiled, right? It's already looking a lot more seamless. Uh, we can also increase the roughness on this noise texture and add some detail, maybe like 12. Of course, this is going to affect your color ramp. So dial that in as well to whatever you want. And you can already see, I mean, just with those few adjustments, it, it's not too bad. Now, I, I mean, it's not great, but it's not so bad actually. Now we can also break it up a little further. Let's control shift D on this overlay here, drag this down here and let's plug the roughness into the a socket and let's plug the result into the roughness not only are we breaking up the color but we're also breaking up the roughness using this noise texture you may actually want to run it like this where you add in a color ramp and plug the noise texture directly into that one and then plug it in down here and we can adjust the roughness with this color ramp. Black is completely reflective, whereas white is completely non-reflective. And we'll think about it in simple terms for now. So that's what we're overlaying. On this case, it doesn't seem to be making a huge difference, but you can see it is making a difference. It really depends on um, how the light is hitting it. We can even go a step further and add a bump. Shift a bump plug the normal into the bump, plug the normal into the normal here, control shift D on this color ramp, and then let's plug this color into the height right here. And now with just one noise texture, we've broken up this material, which has made it appear a lot more seamless than before. So this is before, you can see all of the seams pretty clearly, and then this is after, and you, I mean, on this one, you can hardly tell. I mean, I can see one here and here, but really pretty good. Now for even better results, you can actually use a separate noise texture to drive each one of these different techniques here on the color, the roughness, and the bump. You can even use a normal map to create puddles and stuff like that. But for now, I think this is a simple start. Now here's a problem. If we shift D and let's apply a different set of textures that I brought in. Of course, it immediately turns transparent because <laughs> Quixel likes to put the alpha at zero. Let's put that at one, plug the normal into the normal, plug the roughness into the roughness. And we can actually copy all of this from our other materials. So I'm gonna control C with all those selected. And then in here, I'm gonna move these over, control V to paste. And now, I mean, it is a little bit messy, but we can plug these in. Just make sure we kind of pay attention. Uh, plug in our color here. And let's plug in our roughness here. And then plug in our normal and I'm not gonna set up the displacement for this because you kind of get the point now I'm going to scale this down a ton now you can see the tiling on this particular material is uh, a lot more obvious and apparent than it was on the asphalt and that's just by virtue of choosing a less a less friendly set of textures really for this sort of thing and that's even with all of these different changes right like i already used a noise texture and it still looks pretty tiled because just the way that it, it, it's just not made very seamlessly and so that's a kind of issue that you just got to be aware of when you're using quixel materials but it looks better with the noise additions than without and of course we haven't actually fine-tuned these so maybe if I fine-tune it it'll look a little bit better it's only gonna go as far 
as the non-seamless textures will allow us to. Anyways, I hope these tips helped you. And if so, or even if not, here's some more.